All right, in our last lecture, we learned how to draw shapes and fill those shapes with colors and change the color of the outline, etc. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to take in mouse inputs and uh, how to perform math on the inputs and even some general things about what's the difference between your setup function that only runs once versus your draw function, which runs continuously. So this is a cool one. Let's do this. All right, save this one as, file save as, we'll call this 3A mouse input. Okay, now there's large functions that you could put smaller functions within. And here's the two basic ones that are in basically every program. So void setup. So we type in void space setup. Notice how they change color, which means you know you type them correctly. Again, if I, you know, put a capital S, it's not going to work. It has to be like this. It's case sensitive. After setup, you need to set up parentheses. And then after that, you need to create what's called a brace, an opening brace, which I call hamburger buns. You need like a top hamburger bun, you need a bottom hamburger bun. And those two hamburger buns contain your code sandwich. Um, yeah. And so here's your void setup. Again, set of parentheses, set of hamburger buns. Um, at first, if you like, it might be a little bit more intuitive to put it here and then you put your code, your code sandwich between them. But the way they're commonly shown in most, you know, on most websites and the way most coders do it is they do it like this. The opening hamburger bun is here. Now, your setup is code you only want to run once and stay true for the entire duration of the program. So for instance, um, size, the size of your canvas, you're typically not resizing your canvas throughout your, you know, your basic programs anyway. You could make resizable windows, you could get into that later. But um, in your void setup function, you put things that you want to run only once and keep true for the entire duration. So I'm gonna draw a canvas and it'll never change. Now, onto code that is executed continuously. So in order to do that, you go void draw, which is like void loop, it's loop in many other programs. And again, I'm gonna encase any code uh, under my void draw function, you know, between the two hamburger buns. Now, in void draw, my code is executed one line at a time from top to bottom continuously, and then it loops back to the top. So let me show you what I mean. So we're gonna just do, um, let's go like this. We'll go, actually, let's do this. Watch this. I'm gonna put background 255 up here, which means I'm gonna draw a white background, but only once. Now, let's bring in some mouse input, which is really cool. I'm just gonna draw an ellipse, and for its X coordinate, we're gonna enter the X coordinate of the mouse. For the Y coordinate, I'm gonna enter the Y coordinate of the mouse, and I'm just gonna give it a fixed width of 50 pixels and a fixed height of 50 pixels. So I'm drawing a circle with the you know, width and height of 50 pixels, and the X location is dictated by my mouse. And so is the Y location. Let's run this. And this is gonna be pretty cool. All right, look what happens. I keep drawing wherever my X and Y position for my mouse are located. It draws an ellipse. But notice there's a problem here. It keeps, every single ellipse it's ever drawn is recorded and kept on the canvas. And this actually looks pretty cool. I'll be honest with you. And you move it faster, there's a bit of, you know, missing the coordinates. But, so, notice that it's still, it's never wiped the background clean. Because the only thing I'm doing in my draw function is drawing ellipses continuously. So what I should do instead is I'm going to take this background function out of here, control X, and I'm going to control V it in there. Oh, and by the way, to get things to line up nicely, I'm going to hit hold control and hit T. Control tab. And look at that, that made my space a lot nicer. Now let's run this again. See the difference? Now, every single time my void draw is executed, what does it do? It draws the background, draws a white background, 
draws an ellipse wherever my X and Y locations are, loops back to the top, redraws a white background, redraws ellipse with X and Y locations wherever I'm located, over and over. Uh, let's make it a black ellipse. Make it stand out a little bit more. Fill zero. Okay, and there you go. And just like that, you're able to take mouse input and understand the important difference between void setup and void draw. All right, save your last code, file save. I always forget to do that. File save as now. And let's, we're gonna make some alterations. We're gonna call this 3B math. Okay, because now we're gonna perform some math within the arguments of our functions. So let's do the following. We'll start off simple and make it a little bit more complicated. Uh, just your fit four basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So let's go fill. Uh, let's gonna go with it zero, zero, and I'm gonna do something funky here. I'm gonna change the last, the blue value to mouse X. I want you to kind of predict what do you think is gonna happen because of that. Uh, and for the ellipse, let's go mouse X plus 200, mouse Y minus 100. And I like spaces here. This is personal preference, doesn't matter, but you can go like that or like that. I like a space. Now, before I run it, I want you to make a prediction. What do you think is gonna happen in this program when I run it? And I gotta think about it too, that part I get. Let's see. I think about how the color is gonna change and the location of the cursor versus what's going on. All right, ready? Let's do this, run. Okay, so let's look at this. The location of my cursor versus the ellipse, well, it's drawing it at the X location of the cursor plus 200, which is gonna drag the shape to the right. And the mouse Y position, wherever my mouse is located, it's gonna draw it 100 less. And remember, subtracting moves it upward, right? So that's a little bit interesting. Now, last thing, notice that the blueness of the thing gradually increases. It begins at black and then it doesn't, gets bluer and bluer and it becomes maximum blue. When? Well, when I've moved 255 pixels to the right. So notice it starts out black, gets bluer and bluer, becomes maximum blue and it doesn't get any bluer. Um, because even though I'm producing a value, like, you know, even when I'm all the way over here, which is 800 pixels to the right. So it's plugging in 800 here, but because the maximum value that blue can take is 255, it doesn't matter, right? It's gonna truncate it off and keep it at 255 the whole time. Hope that makes sense, right? Okay, now let's go a little bit more complicated here. Um, let's do multiplication and division. It's not really that much more complicated. All right, so we're gonna take, uh, let's take the red value. We're gonna go mouse X divided by three. And for the blue value, let's go mouse Y. And then times is shift eight, which is your star. And then times three. So here's how to do multiplication or here's how to do division, here's how to do multiplication. Notice in this case, I don't like the space. You can, this is just me, personal preference. All right, and uh, let's put it, um, I don't know, uh, let's just say zero here. Let's not make it too complicated. Um, let's draw a rectangle and uh, uh, I'll just put it in the center. Oh. Here's another way you could put a thing in a center, right? Um, instead of putting it at 400 comma 300, we can instead do it like this. Width divided by two and height divided by two, which is the same thing as putting it at 400 comma 300. Some reasons you might wanna stick to doing it this way as opposed to putting it in the value is let's say you wanna change the size of your canvas. Well now, it'll scale, right? Now, no matter what, it'll scale because the X position is gonna be width divided by two, the height's gonna be right in the middle as well. 
So I'm going to control Z, get that back to my original. And, um, well, let me finish this up and I'll make it 100 by 100. And I'm sure some of you are going to say, but wait, it's not going to show up in the center. And you're right. So I should go rect mode center. Now, this rectangle is going to be in the center. Let's see what happens. Okay. So let's look at this. Let's see what's going on here. So the rectangle is fixed in the center, but let's look at what's happening with the red value here. It takes mouse X and it divides it by three. So I'm going to begin all the way here in the top left corner. So notice it gets red very gradually. And I got to stay all the way up here. So it gets redder and redder the further to the right I move because it's taking the X value of my mouse and dividing it by three. So I'm not going to get the maximum value of red until I'm uh, 255 times three pixels. Uh, let's see what that is. 255 times three until I'm 765 pixels to the right. Now at that point I have achieved maximum redness. Now the Y is a little bit different. It's taking the Y coordinate and it's multiplying it by three. So as I move down, I only have to get basically, you know, less than 100 pixels, about, you know, 85 pixels down until I have maximized the green because 85 times three is going to get us close to our maximum value. Hope that makes sense. And so you have to, if it doesn't, you have to kind of sit on it and think about it and just literally plug in numbers. Okay, if I plugged in 900 here, well, now the value it's going to take is 900 divided by 3, which is 300, right? Okay. Now, your assignment is as follows. Ah, uh, you can't see it. Okay. I want you to create a program of square canvas. And I want you to make a square that gradually expands as you move the cursor across. And here's the last trick. I don't want it to be maximally green until you hit the bottom right corner. And there's a couple ways you can do that. I'll kind of leave it a little bit nebulous just so you can think about it. But yeah, I don't want it to become maximally green until you've moved all the way across. All right, as I always say, Think about this. Don't just look up my answer as it comes up. You'll learn the most by doing this and struggling with it. And then if there's something I did that you didn't think of, it'll be like, oh my God, right. I, sorry, I didn't think of that. But if you just go through my answer without going through that struggle, my answer is worthless. All right, do it. All right, time to do our assignment. First, save the old one. Forgot to tell you to do it again. All right, let's give this a name, file save as. I'll call this 3C, and I'll just call this 3C. It's another test. And let me just do it from scratch. That's the nice, that's the right way to do it. And I said, make a square canvas, so let's make a square canvas. And I said, I'll make it, um, let's just go with 800 by 800. Good square size. And now void draw. And um, notice it had a black background from the get-go, so I'll go background zero. And it's a rectangle. I mean, this is pretty straightforward, I hope. And by the way, these are going to get more complicated as we go through. Um, I am just going to draw a rectangle, and it's basically drawn wherever the X location and the Y location of the mouse is. And um, no, wait, that's not right at all. No, 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 no. No, it's the top left corner is fixed to zero, zero. Ah, but the width and the height change as I move my mouse across, right? That's the right way to do it. Uh, let's start there, one layer at a time. Yay, okay. So now, other thing. Um, I said I wanted to get gradually greener and not get completely green until it hits the bottom right corner. And I didn't say, which way you had to do it. So all I want to do is say, all right, uh, the fill needs to go zero in the red, but the green, well, let's just make it mouse X. If you already know why this is wrong, yay. Uh, but you'll see a problem with this. 
So notice I'm getting completely green here, right? I don't want that. I don't want it to be completely green yet. I don't want it to get completely green until I'm all the way down here. So let's go with like, uh, let's take the X coordinate. Uh, let's see, 800 divided by three, 266. That's pretty good. So let's take the X coordinate and divide it by three. So here you go. It's not um, when I get all the way across at 800 pixels, 800 divided by three is 266. So I'm going to hit 255, you know, a couple pixels shy of that, which is perfect. So I'm getting gradually greener and greener and greener, and I don't get completely green until I've made it pretty much all the way across my canvas. And that's the answer to our little test here. Okay, we're done with this chapter. We're going to move on to the next chapter, which is how to use conditionals, if and else statements. And I'm going to combine that information with how to take inputs from your keyboard and your mouse. And so you use if conditionals to say, hey, if I press this button, do this thing. If I press that button, do that thing, etc. And uh, again, um, I giving you the full tutorial online. If you're curious, I wrote a book on the subject too. It's a short little book. Uh, it's two dollars and ninety-nine cents. I'll leave a link in the description underneath my video if you ever want to buy it. Okay, see you in the next one. Bye bye.